Hello, Rudy at Cloud and Painting Studio here. Um, this video is a bit of a special one. I am painting up a, well, a pair of batteries of Napoleonic Russian artillery uh, to donate to a club in Glasgow that's running a charity event where they are uh, fighting the Battle of Borodino. Um, I'm going to put links to their pages in the description below. And let's have a look at how to paint up artillery crew as quickly as possible uh, for plonking on the table. I'm going to be using contrast paints from Games Workshop today. Uh, the base coat that I have, uh, the model was sprayed with Army Painter's Skeleton Bone and then dry brushed with some Coat d'Arms White. And the first colour that I'm using out the pot is Dark Angel's Green. I'm going to paint in his jacket, trying to avoid um, the straps which are going to stay white. And collars and cuffs are going to be a different colour. But the cuff flap, which is this part here with the buttons on it, that would be green. And try and leave the outside of the cuff flap in the base coat colour because that's going to have some piping in red. Okay, I'll carry around uh, the rest of the model and get the green jacket done. Next up is Gilliman Flesh, which is of course going to be used for the skin of the face and the hands. This is Black Templar. And I'm painting in his shackle, but I'm leaving the cords and the pom-pom on the front in the base coat. Other things we'll use the black on are his boots poking out of the end of his gaiters. But a bit of fine detail is required as well. Um, cuffs are going to be black. I'm going to try and leave a bit of the base coat showing because we're going to put a red piping in there if possible. Also the same is true for the collar. And the turnbacks as well. It's a big great coat wrapped over his shoulder. And I'm using Basilicanum Grey to paint this. With snake bite leather, I'm gonna paint his scabbard. And I'll do the hilt of the sword as well. That's the base coat for the metallic paint to come later. And he's got hair and sideburns to pick out as well. Blood Angel's Red is going to be used to do uh, the piping, which you can find on his cuffs. Also on the turnbacks. The collar as well needs some piping. Um, but the other thing to paint in red on the shackle is the pom-pom and also the cord. Which extends down flaps onto his shoulder. Got some of the acrylic white out. This is just um, white from Coat d'Arms. And I am adding some very fine highlights. This will just help bring out some of the raised surfaces and a bit more pop to the model in the simplest way possible. So 
So just some little horizontal lines on the trousers. And on the strap edges. And it just means that the white has a bit more uh, oomph to it, so it's noticeable at further distances away. Got some Vallejo brass to pick out a couple of details. And there's a crossed cannons on the front of the shako. We've got some buttons. and hilt of a sword and end of the scabbard and very rapidly painted up a napoleonic russian artillery crewman so we've had a look at how to paint the crew um, and now on to the gun itself and um, i've got the carriage here um, i'm keeping the cannon separate because it will get in the way a bit of this uh, process for painting up the carriage um, I've sprayed it with some Army Painter Angel Green um, for the primer um, and I'm going to do an all over dry brush um, with some Vallejo, Gay, uh, Vallejo model uh, colour deep green. There's quite a lot of sculpted detail um, such as wood grain and the dry brush will be quite effective at picking this up. Uh, leaving this dark angel green um, in the recesses and brightening up the raised areas of wood green. I'll do that for the rest of the model. Come back in a minute. So I've dry brushed deep green um, all over the model. Not being too careful. Um, we're going to paint over all the um, iron work that's around the wood now. Um, I've got some matte black from the Ari Painter to pick this out. And essentially there's lots of bits sticking out of the wood um, and all of this is going to get a coat of the black. Um, along the top um, you've got iron reinforcing uh, the wood and you've got bolts going through to hold it all together. Iron around the wheels and again holding the wheels together and a hubcap as well. So lots of black to apply to pick out all these areas. So I've filled in all the ironwork with um, black and now I'm going to do another bit of dry brushing as a highlight. I'm concentrating on the ironwork um, but if it picks up the edges of the um, wheels for example then it's no big deal. Um, this is Army Painter Drake Tooth, which is an off-white. It's got a slight green tinge to it, um, and it'll also help look like a bit of dust as well. And bringing up the rivets quite straightforwardly with this dry brushing approach. Just saves a bit of time over individually highlighting them. Once this step's done I'll put the gun carriage away and move on to the cannon barrels. So you can see how I've, I've set up the guns now. Um, I drilled a hole in the base of them just under um, the centre which is going to be hidden when you stick the model together um, and I'm using a bit of paper clip uh, glued on to uh, tongue depressor to support them while I paint. They've had an undercoat of black um, and I'm going to dry brush some Vallejo bronze. Very straightforward process. Big old dry brush and quick application of bronze. Let that dry and highlight it in a few minutes. The highlight is going to be with Vallejo Brass. Again, just dry brushed over the top. Really just concentrating on that <clears throat> top down view. And that we're going to be highlighting the area that's receiving 
the most light. As you can see, I've got multiple guns on the go here, um, and that's because we're building an artillery battery. Um, and my next step is to pop these guns off and then glue them on to the carriages and I'll start basing things up. All based and ready for battle. I've used some Geek Gaming Scenix patchy planes and they're mounted on 80mm by 60mm uh, MDF bases. Let's go in for a, a closer look. So we've got two different um, sets. There's the loading set. Um, we've got six pounder cannons uh, flanking a 10 pound uh, unicorn um, or howitzer in, the, in Russian terms. And this battery has the same makeup of guns, um, but the crew are in the firing pose. One of the bases out for a closer look. So everything has been painted in the way I demonstrated earlier in the video. Uh, crew largely with um, contrast paints. And the gun uh, largely done with dry brushing. If we get close in, then maybe you start to notice that some of the details are, are not there, like having on the eyes, um, on the, the crew models. But I think you'd agree um, that a masked battery viewed, um, well, from a foot away at this point looks pretty good. And when it's viewed from the other side of a four foot or six foot deep table, um, it's going to look pretty good. Um, I'm sad that I'm missing the opportunity to um, play with uh, these models down in Glasgow for the big Borodino bash. Um, but I'm hoping that someone will get um, some good use out of these artillery models um, in defending one of the readouts. As far as I'm aware, the Russian forces that are being assembled for um, this game gaming day are all going to be up for auction after the event uh, to raise money for the veterans charity um, that the club is representing. Um, I'll put some links in the description below, which will hopefully give uh, more details. Um, I hope this has been a, a useful guide to Napoleonic uh, Russian artillery. Um, if you've got any comments, please leave them below. Bye for now.